So I want to talk a little bit about the myths of the past. You, we, we believe that there were many ancient cultures that believed the earth was flat. And they should know better because your Bible tells you several places, Isaiah 40, 22, the, the, that the earth is a circle, a sphere. And uh, another thing that came along in the 17th century was the idea of phlogiston, which is a material that caused things to burn. That was the way they thought things burned because they had this peculiar material in it. And uh, obviously we know, we, they learned that it's actually oxidation and the whole concept of burning was uh, in error for a long, long time. It's a classic example. We all probably know about the Ptolemaic cosmology, the idea in the days of Ptolemy, they thought that Earth was the center of the universe, that the sun rose in the morning, set in its sight. They, they actually had a, what's called a geocentric concept here. And uh, that, of course, was replaced by what we call the Copernican cosmology, where the sun is the center of our solar system. Not of the whole universe, but of our solar system. Ptolemy, of course, in Alexandria, he is going to go down in history as opposing two fundamental truths in science. He, of course, was wrong about having a Earth-centered solar system. He, we know we have a Sun-centered solar system. He also argued it was impossible to have four dimensions, interestingly enough. He proved that a fourth dimension was impossible because he couldn't visualize a fourth thing perpendicular to the other three. We th you think of one line, you get the idea of orthogonal or, or perpendicular, he couldn't, he said it was impossible to have four, and of course he's wrong, and he's going to go down in history as being wrong on both of his main points here. Higher geometry, in fact, is the key to understanding other uh, conceptions of our universe. We, we covered that in one of our previous sessions. But another myth for a long time, they looked for ether. Ether was this, the, the medium by which light can travel through the universe. How can light travel from here to the moon? Must be something in there for it to travel in. They call that ether, look for it, and so forth. But the Michelson-Morley experiment back in 1887, which incidentally occurred on the Naval Academy grounds, by the way, um, were, um, pr proved that ether didn't exist. They tried to measure it didn't exist, so that, that punctured a common uh, a myth of the time. The velocity of light is another one, and uh, the, uh, uh, it was interesting that it was uh, under Descartes and so forth, they thought light was, the speed of it was infinite, or putting another way, light was instantaneous. And, uh, but an a, a astronomer by the name of Romer, uh, Olaf Romer, um, found a way to measure the speed of light by watching the, the eclipse of a moon on, on uh, Saturn, and uh, so he, pr he, he measured it, the speed of light, that it was very fast, but finite. And it wasn't for 50 years later that Bradley, an Englishman, um, did the same thing, and they finally accepted that, that light had a, a specific speed. The interesting thing here, aside from the physics of light, is to realize even the physicists, it took them 50 years to swallow the, the, the meaning of empirical data. That we can constantly create theories that are not quite correct and, and uh, cling to them in the face of exper experience, experimental data to the contrary. When you find something that doesn't agree with your theory, you find an excuse to throw it out. No, we should be listening to it. And uh, we always thought that light was a uh, constant. Satterfield Norman has discovered it's not a constant. We'll talk a little bit more about that in our next session. Mm -hmm.